Hello and welcome to this edition of Minstrels on the Block, where we bring you the finest singer-songwriters in the Valley area. I'm Brian Mallard, and this week's guest is Abby Permenter. Abby, Thank good you. to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. So tell me about yourself. Where were you born? I was originally born in Florida, Winter Haven, so um, I moved up. I lived there for about nine years, and then moved up here to Georgia, and I've been here for about ten. So cool. Yeah. Did, it, it, do you come from a musical family? I did. My dad uh, played music for a while, and he um, he is an engineer, but he it, my family's always been musical. We've always listened to music constantly, so um, he mainly. My parents both uh, had me get piano lessons at age six. Cool. So it was the great way to start out. And uh, I'm, when we moved up here, I kind of ended up falling apart with my teacher because I didn't have one for a while. And I decided I really wanted to learn violin. So I picked up the violin, and I really liked Irish fiddle music. So nice. I picked up the Irish fiddle for a while. And then I decided my dad had uh, some ovations and an electric guitar, and I picked up the electric guitar one day because it was easier to play. Mm -hmm. And he showed me a couple chords, gave me a chord book, and I just went on from there and taught myself how to play. So, so you're pretty much totally self-taught. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Aside from the, the early on. Aside from piano and violin, <laughs> everything was self-taught. So. so going back a little bit, tell me a little bit more about your parents. Uh, my dad, <laughs> he's a big 70s rock fan, so I grew up listening to all the 70s music. I really love Stevie Nicks, so I listened to a lot of her music. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Pink Floyd, uh, who else? Led Zeppelin, Leonard Skinner. Grew up with the Allman Brothers. Grew up with them. So, cool. um, and music just was a big part of my family. So it just always has been. Yeah. And what did your mom do? Uh, my mom listens to music. She <laughs> she didn't really pick up any instruments. She played the French horn when she was in school, but other than that, yeah. and my dad's a big musician, so he plays guitar and ovation mainly. So. So when he played, did like he play with a band and? Um, <clears throat> no, he just kind of picked it up for himself, and mm -hmm. um, he just never got the chance to actually pursue it. He was you. in the navy for a while, and then he got married to my mom in the navy, and they had a family, so he just couldn't actually right, have time yeah. to pursue it. For the record, folks. I'm sitting right over there. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Infotainment. <laughs> <laughs> Just to give you visual. Yeah. Now, um, tell me about your, uh, your, your self-taught. So tell me a little bit about how that was for you. Um, it came naturally because I learned stuff by ear anyways. Mm -hmm. um, I can read music. I, um, it wasn't that hard, honestly, because when you look at a chord book, it shows you where to place your fingers. Yeah. Um, it just mainly is practice, 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 yeah. and just getting the strength in your fingers and getting mm -hmm. used to muscle memory and all that. And it really, it honestly, was it was hard in the fact that you had to constantly practice. But right. in actual, um, like, is it hard to figure out or learn? No, not at all. Yeah. I, I tell everyone that. They're like, how do you learn guitar? And I'm like... It's quite simple. You just pick up a chord book or go online, learn simple chords. Don't even have to start out with this bar chords or anything. Just start out with simple G chord and A chord and E chord, and you, you got a song right there. So Three chords and a lot of volume. That's, that's all it takes. <laughs> that's all it takes. Now, tell me about um, at what age or what point did, did it click for you? Did you decide that this is what I want to do? Um, originally, yeah, I wanted to be a Broadway singer and an actress, but it finally hit when I, uh, when a friend of mine had a poem, and I started learning guitar around age 12, 13, and she brought a poem to me around 13, and, uh, I read it, and she wrote it kind of like a song, so mm -hmm. I was like, this sounds like a song, Candace, so she, it's like, give me, I was like, can I borrow this? So I borrowed it, and then with the, I don't know, three, four chords I knew, I, Composed something for it and I sang it and I was like this actually sounds decent I should play it for her. and I played it for her, and she thought it was amazing so I thought oh maybe I should try it with my own poems that I've written and stuff so I did that and I just kind of blew up from there and I was actually good at it so <laughs> it wasn't like I was composing something that was just cheesy or anything um not that there's cheesy music but it's just like that and I I just picked it up and I was like, oh, maybe I should try this. I really like performing. I really love music. I never thought I would actually do it as a job. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah it just kind of <clears throat> fell into place as everything went on. So now, what what is your inspiration for writing? What do you write from? 
Um, mainly I write about life experiences. I am not old enough <laughs> to have so many, <laughs> but I can take other people's life experiences. Mm -hmm. Like, I wrote a song um, for a Korean singer who lost his father, and wow. he, uh, his father never got to see him mm -hmm. um, perform finally uh, when he made it big, and he passed away before then. And I was, I, I thought about that, and I was like, what if one of my parents passed away before I, they, I like made it big, or if they saw me succeed? And um, it just kind of hit me really hard, especially my dad, and because he was. He was the one that really wanted to be a musician. And it was the same thing with his father. His father wanted to be a singer. So um, I just kind of took that in and I was like, it, he just won his only wish, the Korean singer, his only wish was his dad to see him just once perform on stage and um, in the big time and everything, but he just couldn't do it. So I wrote a song just about, it was called See Me Just Once. And it was how much work you put into it and how much they encouraged you. And even though you couldn't be there, it's just one wish of mine to have you see me just once. Cool. Now, the, the, this is the important, the ultra important question of the show. Elvis or the Beatles? Beatles, definitely. <laughs> Same answer every time. <laughs> now, tell me about your first show playing in front of people public <laughs> my first show i would have to say uh was at a church <laughs> so cool. i've started performing at a church and um it was actually pretty big i had uh, this was my first band i tried to start it was like me and a girl on a keyboard and another friend of mine on the bass and i was on the guitar and we played and we had actually two churches merged to come see us and so i the first time i performed really was um, in front of like 200 people so wow and I played recitals before then so for piano and violin so I've just always been able to perform naturally now for <clears throat> there's a um, one thing before we go into the break um, you said that you're a college graduate yes did you go to college have, did your college have to do with music or what did you go to college for? I, I went to college at Albany Technical College in, for design and media productions technology which is cool. pretty much designing advertisements logos layouts of magazines of newspapers anything I can design from scratch it was my backup plan because my parents said if you want to pursue music you got to have a backup right. so this is my fallback plan if it doesn't work out Sean Rocks would be proud <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, let's go check out one of Abby's songs and we'll be right back after this. This is Cafe Daydreams.
makes my day All 32 of them I just wish you would say I love you now, I love you then I just want to wrap my arms around you And hold you tight Feel your hands hold me Telling me we're alright Baby, we're alright Just a girl in a city dreaming of you with me Maybe one day we'll be before now I'll drink my coffee in this little cafe full of my dreams Yes, I'll drink my coffee in this little cafe full of my dreams Hello and welcome back to this edition of Minstrels on the Block. Special guest, Abby Permenter. So, Abby, go, coming forward a little bit, what do, you, what do you have going on now? Tell me a little bit about maybe leading up to it and what you have going on now. Um, right now, as of this weekend, I'm, on Friday, I will be playing Java the Hutt in Leesburg, Georgia. Um, Phil Phillips started in kind of Java the Hutt area. He's mm -hmm. the winner of American Idol. Um, so I'll be playing there from seven to ten, but I'll be it'll be about a two hour, so it'll be off and on. And also um, uh, Saturday, I will be playing Florence Marina. Uh, I think it's the Reptile Festival, and I'll be nice. playing from ten to four, and that's off and on. So just come and enjoy the festival. Come, and I'll most likely be playing. And uh, right after that, during Saturday, I'll be in Parrot, Georgia, and. Nice. Um, I'll be playing an opening for a uh, store. I think that's six to nine, and I'll be off and on there. Very so, cool. Yeah. Now, how many songs have you written? Uh, songs I've written about probably eighty-six. Nice. And um, not all of them are performable, or I've oh, yeah. composed, um, composed, and probably <laughs> ready to perform about thirty. So. Nice. Well, that's yeah. that's that's the full set. <laughs> <laughs> Now tell me a little bit, you know, we've talked a little bit about the, the, the hardships of, of keeping a band together and for other musicians out there watching who might be in the same situation, tell me a little bit about your experiences with the band. Um, I, I love performing in a band because then you can kind of, everybody can bounce off each other. That's right. the best part of having a band and especially ones that are hard core for it and they're just like pumped and it's just so much fun to have it. Mm -hmm. The hardship about it is it's hard to find someone who's dedicated as oh, you yeah. are. Um, it's <laughs> I think that's anybody's problem. Yeah. It's just trying to find the dedication in people. Because I have I started at least four bands and the first one didn't go through because I think I was too young mm -hmm. and we were all just too young and then I started about two more and that was about the same problem and the last one I started with some friends who were actually pretty good musicians mm -hmm. and they we performed at a festival the pig fest and it just kind of they were in college some of them were still in school and so practices were hard to get to so that's just De dedication is just the hardest thing to find in yeah. a musician, so in a, getting a band together. It's just everybody has to be 110%. Yeah. So also relevant to musicians watching, where did you go from there that you decided to... Um, yeah, I decide, I've <coughs> always kind of played on my own, so I played festivals on my own before I could get bands up there and everything, so I just decided this is what I want to do, so I just got to go for it. And mm. people got to like me and a guitar, so that's yeah. just kind of how it went. Now, <clears throat> tell me about some of the gigs that you have played. I have played everything, pretty much. I've played background music for banquets. I've played, um, you got to play those. They're usually the money makers. Yeah. So um, I've played festivals and fairs, um, cafes and coffee shops, restaurants. I've played it all. So it's just 
wherever and whenever you can. Yeah. You just got to take every opportunity. You can't miss one. Now, where would you like to, I mean, this may seem like a silly question, but where do you see your, where would you like to see your music go? What do you, what, what's your hope for it? I would love to be like, I would love to make a living off of it, mm -hmm. um, but I would actually love to be out in like Hollywood and all that kind of stuff and be pretty big, but mm -hmm. I'm okay if I can make a living off of it touring around just our area and our, our area as in our country. And, yeah. um, but I would love to be able to go like tour in other countries yeah. and stuff. I would love to go to like Japan and Korea and France and Italy and all England, wherever I can go, I would love to go and travel. I've always had that adventure side of me. Yeah. So, um, kind of like when you think about fantasy books, like Lord of the Rings or whatever, it's kind of like going to a new world. So yeah. it's, I would love for my music to be pretty big and I would love it to be heard by a lot of people because my music usually has a pretty good meaning to it. I don't mm -hmm. write um, just the everyday love song. Right. So I try to write things that people will want to hear, maybe learn something from it, or just mm -hmm. kind of uplift them, or even just make them stop and think and just kind of be in the moment. Music that people can connect to the, the ultimate goal of, of any songwriter. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> do you have, uh, have you done any recording? I have sort of. I went to a, um, a friend of my parents. They he had a studio for a while, mm -hmm. and I recorded a small demo. The problem was he passed away suddenly and never like was wow. able to. Yeah, it was really a freak accident, and he um, he he never finished it. So it was handed off to someone else, and so it kind of was rough finished. Mm -hmm. So it's. Decent enough for a demo, but it was made like two or three years ago. And mm. I've gone to friends' houses and recorded with their equipment, but other than actually going to a professional studio, I have not. So, do you have like music available, or, or is, is I have music available online? You can go to uh, my Facebook page, which is Amp Up the Music, mm. and that's all one word. Word and. Uh, <clears throat> It's AMP stands for my initials, so oh. the uh, Abigail Marie Permenter. So cool. that's kind of my initials spelled out AMP. I was like, that sounds awesome. So <laughs> perfect for a musician. Great publicity. So, and then I have a YouTube account, and you can go to www.youtube.com slash amp up the music. We're going to condense all that in the pimp section. But uh, <clears throat> that's fine. One, one question. Uh, now we we heard like what you grew up listening to. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're walking around my house on a Sunday afternoon or whatever, <laughs> drinking a glass of tea. And uh, <laughs> what are you most likely to be playing in your CD player, iPod? What, what is it the standard today? <laughs> uh, I play everything. I listen to everything. It just depends on my mood that day. I could be listening to K-pop. I could be listening to soundtrack music. I I mainly like to listen to soundtrack music just because there's no words. I'm not being distracted by anything, and it's just mm -hmm. very soothing. Um, but mm -hmm. I. I like to listen to a lot of like of the alternative kind of mm -hmm. um, like Paramore. I love to listen to them. Um, I listen to Barlow Girl, which is more of a Christian um, band, and uh, I just listen to everybody. I have tons of music yeah. and just a wide variety of it. So very cool. Yeah, it's it's good, especially for a composer, because then you get different styles to listen to. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, let's listen to her style for a little bit, and we'll be right back right after this. This next song is called Sometimes.
Sometimes life just works that way You are not broken us all day And when you say you couldn't get any worse And that there's nothing that could be These were dead times Hello and welcome back to this edition of Minstrels on the Block. Special guest, Abby Permenter. So, Abby, this is the part of the show where we pimp stuff. This is a promotional <laughs> aspect of the show. So, in a list, in case all of the things that you have for people to see, hear, go to, visit, buy, whatever, hand it, hand it to them. I have a Facebook page, which is Amp Up the Music. It's all one word. Amp is my initials, so it's Abigail Marie Permenter, so it's just worked out that way. Um, if you search it on Facebook, it should be there. Um, if you go, I would suggest my YouTube if you really want to hear stuff. Uh, it, I have a bunch of videos up. Um, it's going to be www.ampupthemusic, so yeah, www.com. And uh, for people who, who might be willing to travel to see music, where are you performing coming up? I am performing uh, for this weekend. I'll be performing Friday at Java the Hut in Leesburg, Georgia. It's where Phil Phillips started. Um, he's the American, American Idol winner. Um, after that, will be at 7 to 10, and I'll be playing about two hours. Uh, if you want, if you can't make it that day, I will be playing at Florence Marina on Saturday. Mm -hmm. That'll be 10 to 4. I'll be playing off and on, so just come. It's their reptile festival, I think it is, and um, you nice. can just come have some fun, uh, see some really cool lizards. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Uh, at right after that, I will be heading to Parrot, Georgia, and I will be playing at a grand opening at Yesterday's, which is an antique shop, and cool. that'll be from, I think it's 6 to 9, and I'll be playing off and on there. There's a barbecue place right across the street. They told me it's really good, so if you want some good barbecue, you can come there. Sean Rocks would also be happy. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, there's a couple of questions I'd like to ask. One is, 
Now, you, you've, you've played around this area, the Valley area. What do you think of the local music scene? Uh, it's big. It's a lot bigger than I thought. And there are a lot of good talent out there. I've thought, man, I don't know what I'm doing here sometimes. <laughs> it's just like you sit there and you go, wow, they're really good. So I, I'm impressed. I, I, I think they have a good set, variety, if anything. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of good music out there, a lot of good live people you should go see. And is there a way that, that you see any way that you think it could be improved? Um, I've never really thought about it. Uh, I would like it if people came out and supported more. I mean, sometimes I've played places where no one came out. I think it would help if promotion-wise, if like yeah. the, the area would help promote the local artists, because mm -hmm. then people might actually know and come out and see it. Right. So I think that's the, o that's the biggest problem with almost anywhere, is mm -hmm. promotional things. I mean, you gotta, if you want people to come, they have to know if they're gonna yeah. come. So I think that's the only thing that could help be improved, is the promotion of the local local artists. And one question, one more question, and this goes back to the uh, musicians watching, aspiring musicians, singers, songwriters, actors, whatever, artists out there who, who would like to do something. What would be your advice to an aspiring singer, songwriter, artist, or whatever? It would have to be practice. Practice, 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 and take criticism. You have to have criticism. Mm -hmm. If you're not singing something right, you should know. You want to know. You, mm -hmm. you want to have criticism. My yeah. sister said it the best. She, she's an artist, and she says, I strive for criticism. Not me as an artist, she's a painter, and she's like, I want to know if something doesn't look good or not. Yeah. So if, as a musician, I want to know if I sound good. I want to know if my lyrics are good. So practice and take criticism it's the best way and play everywhere if you're playing at a church if you're playing on the sidewalk i've gone in between in columbus georgia between barnes and nobles and uh cafe all right next to it and i played on the street for no money just played there just so people could see me cool. so yeah i've done that twice at least so yeah i did not know you could do that <laughs> <laughs> it's legal if you don't accept tips and as long as you're not a disturbance i wouldn't go out there with a rock band and be blaring people out <laughs> so i was playing acoustic guitar with just my voice right, and trying to yeah. sing over like just street noise and right. so it, it, and you'll be surprised how many people will stop and listen to you I've had 30 people stop and just sit there and listen so mm -hmm. it was it was a lot of fun and you meet a lot of cool people and other musicians will come up to you and say hey uh, what do you do and how do you play and you just yeah. get you pick up tips along the way so just play everywhere don't be afraid of criticism because it's your best friend and know what's good criticism and what's bad criticism right yeah because some people can just be haters pretty yeah. much and just yeah. say just to bring you down and it's you just can't let you you just can't be down so you just can't let it get you you down. gotta cipher through the good and bad yeah, yeah. and you gotta have thick skin so. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah really thick skin <laughs> well abby I appreciate you being on the show. It's a great pleasure having Thank you on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And hope you've enjoyed this episode. And uh, we'll see you next time. I'm Brian Mallard for CTV EA Minstrels on the Block. This song is I Might Not Be the One. Recently, that not everybody wants me. Who they want and who they need, say I might not be the one. No. Well, it probably wasn't anything I had said. It probably wasn't anything I had done. It just was a sad case that I just wasn't.
Bye. 